bit of an unusual uh, preparation today. Um, it's not Omnoy who's going to show you how to cook this meal. It's me, Michael, I'm Omnoy's husband. And this has come about because we have dinner guests tonight and they are bringing a drink called sangria, which some of you will know is a Spanish alcoholic drink. Very refreshing. And so I said, okay, I'll make a paella, which is a Spanish traditional dish. And we thought, well, why don't we put this together on video and show you how that's done. It doesn't quite fit with the fast and easy, because it's neither fast, but I think it is actually easy, if you know what you're doing. But well, that's what most things in life, isn't it? But um, as always, we try and make it as easy as possible. And um, the Spanish paella is actually from Valencia in Spain. So that is the region where it originated, around the 17th, 1800th and really came to national fame then in the 1900s. It's a traditional dish that has always been prepared by men over a huge fire in a very big large pan. And I think you saw the intro, that big picture. Unfortunately, I can't offer you that. We're using a normal wok for this. Um, but this is how traditionally it was done and where the name comes from because that is derived from a Spanish variation of the word pan. So that is what paella means. It is essentially a rice dish, so that sticks with the whole Thai theme, so to speak. But that will probably be it, oh, although we have chili as well. Now we have our trusted rice, um, and so that will be one of the main ingredients. Um, today my wife is filming, so I'm going to have to ask her to come forward, and we'll just go through the ingredients, if you can just come a bit closer. So we start here on the side. Um, I'm using coconut oil. Uh, for frying, I use it for all the frying I do because it withstands an enormous amount of heat and doesn't burn off. Um, we're going to use salt. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a salt pig like that. Um, this way, um, through some strange design, it does not um, clog up, which is really good. Okay, we need chicken for this dish. I've used four chicken drumsticks and I cooked them and I've taken the meat off. Um, we then have, to the right of that, we have some sausage. Now, sausage, I use a frankfurter for this, but obviously if you can get a chorizo, that would be great. Um, I've used six small frankfurters and it's going to be four people. Okay, just to give you an indication, this is all for four people. Okay, um, in between we've got olives. I use stuffed olives because it just makes it so much nicer when you're eating that you don't have to get rid of the, the kernels, the pips. Um, tomatoes, um, if you want to do a little bit more work, uh, get fresh tomatoes and um, throw them into boiling water, then peel off the skin. Um, and if you take the easy way out that I have done, you'll just get them in a can and take them out. Um, we've got spring onion. You can also use onion. I prefer spring onion. They're just more convenient, but that is your choice. We're moving further and here we've got some paprikas or peppers, how they're called in some areas. I've chosen uh, red and green and half of each. Uh, you can go for a whole, but then it turns more into a meal for six people. A little bit of garlic, as you probably know from Omnoy's presentations. We're not great friends of garlic, but that's purely for reasons of, uh, you know, on our professional jobs, we need to have fresh breath. But um, in this occasion, we're not going to go on a day tomorrow, so we'll have some garlic. We've got some, um, some prawn here. They've already had their heads cut off and the shells taken off. Um, the traditional way is to just throw them into the pan, but again, um, it's a matter of convenience. On It's easier to eat if you don't have to peel them while you're eating it. Uh, some chilies, be careful with these. Uh, some green beans, fresh out of the garden, and fresh mussels. Now, fresh mussels, if you can't get them, it's fine to buy the ones at the deli counter. But of course, with fresh ones, you can determine very much how you cook them, and I use some white wine with that. So I use half a bottle of cheap white wine. You don't have to pay for an expensive wine. This is a Chardonnay. That will be fine. Now it's very easy and simple. With live mussels you just throw them into boiling water um, and uh, it's a mixture of boiling water and wine and a bit of salt. Uh, you could add garlic if you like and um, you basically cook them until the shells have opened. 
It's also important to note when you buy them, if there are any that have opened or broken shells, do not take those. There's obviously something wrong with those. Okay, that's where we are. Well, obviously we use ground pepper, that's why I put it there. And a little bit of uh, saffron. Now saffron is an incredibly rare spice and um, it's also a bit of an acquired taste. So it may not be your cup of tea. Some people complain that it is actually a little bit bitter. And it can be if you use too much. Now this is actually too much what I've had in this little dish. There's also another consideration. Saffron is uh, very, very expensive, as you will find out when you try to buy a small portion. And in reality, for this dish, it's actually more for coloring. So um, if you're not too concerned about the coloring of it, then by all means, don't use uh, saffron. Okay? But do not substitute it with things like turmeric or curry powder because they look similar. Uh, it will ruin the dish. So we, won't, we don't want to go down that way. Now the traditional um, paella was done originally um, for, with rabbit meat, later on duck and so forth. Um, but this is what we're doing is a mixed paella and that allows us to have seafood and also some meats. You could also go for a piece of uh, pork, um, but I find it just takes too long to cook all the various different ingredients. This is the most convenient and easy way and I like things to be easy. Alright, so the first thing we do, as you might have seen, there's a lot of steam coming there in the back. We've already got the water boiling and the wine. And we just throw in the mussels and then when they have cooked, um, we open them up, uh, take them out and um, we'll take them out of the shells. Now, if you like the look of mussels in the shells, by all means you can later on drape them on your dish. Again, um, I'll prefer to just have the dish and be able to eat it rather than all this mucking around with um, taking the mussels, ripping them out. And I have seen people cut themselves on the shells, so in the interest of safety, um, it's a lot easier um, doing that beforehand, draping them nicely on the dish, as I will show you later on. So, we'll put the mussels in the boiling water, and then I'll come back to you. Thank you. Okay, now the mussels are ready, and um, we've actually taken them out of the shells. And um, would you believe, out of one and a half kilos of live mussels, this is actually what's left. That's about three pounds in... Um, American measurements. And we've taken the little hairy bits out because you don't want to eat them and they're a real nuisance trying to get off. Um, so that's a bit of a, a convenient thing again. We want to make the, the actual eating a nice pleasurable experience. Um, and one word of caution, you know how I mentioned before that if any of the mussels when you buy them has, is already opened or cracked, you don't take them. A similar rule applies once they're boiled, they should easily open. If they don't open, throw them away. There's something wrong with them. Alright? So that's that. So the mussels can be put away. In the meantime, I've heated up the oil. Yes, it's reasonably hot. And we'll put things in in the following order. We start with a spring onion, or normal onion, if you have those. Okay. And we add the chili. Nice and hot, and our garlic, and stir it in a little bit, turn it down so it doesn't go all crazy, and brown the onions a little bit. Now, and this is also the time where we put in the sausage. <coughs> mm, I always react to the chili. Sorry if I'm coughing here. Now in case you're wondering about the glass of red wine, this is a very nice New Zealand Merlot. I haven't actually looked at the bottle. It tastes nice and it's red. That's all I need to know. And it's not essential for this kind of cooking, but it's essential for me when I'm cooking. I always have a glass of red. So that's why it's here. It's not something you have to have, but makes the job nicer, more enjoyable. All right. Now, while these are heating up and nicely cooking along, a little bit of advice to our male viewers, and that is, um, if you are preparing a nice meal like this for your dinner guests or for the uh, lady of your heart, it does actually help in between when you have a moment to quickly tidy up and clean the dishes and not 
leave a complete and utter mess in the kitchen. Because otherwise, you have the situation that you say, oh honey, I'm going to cook tonight, and you get this rather mixed response, rather than, yay! Because, if it turns out to be that you cook a fantastic meal, but you leave a complete and utter mess that takes her over an hour to clean up behind you, because you obviously say, hi, I've done all the cooking, I'm not going to go back in the kitchen, then that's not going to be going down very well. So there you go. You didn't know that you were going to get some relationship advice as well with this cooking lesson. So, my dear fellow friends, heed this warning. It goes a long way to get some goodwill. Okay, now the sauce is coming along nicely. And now the next thing we're going to put in are the peppers. And the reason for that is that they actually have quite a firm consistency and therefore they'll take a bit longer to cook than uh, the beans or the olives or the tomatoes. Okay, now we put them in. And this is, although we have chili in here, it actually is a good idea to add pepper and lots. And you might think, well, isn't this going to get way too hot? No, the reason for this is because you're adding the rice later on, you're actually putting it into the mixture, you don't have this separate, the rice is going to soak up a lot of the heat. By heat I mean spiciness. <coughs> and this is very spicy, so this is why I have the wine. Any excuse actually. Okay. Now, we need a little bit of fluid in here. But rather than adding water or anything, what we do is we just put the lid on and that will drive out the heat from the peppers. And I'll come back when it's time to put the other ingredients in. If you hear me coughing, I don't have a cold, it's just the chili. Okay, as you can see, the sausage is browning very nicely. Brilliant. Okay. We're now adding the beans. If you don't like beans, it's fine to use garbanzos or um, peas. And olives, as I mentioned, I use the pitted ones with a stuffing. It's just a lot easier to eat them. And the tomatoes. Now they're going to add a bit of juice as well. But you don't want it too runny anyway. Okay, and we just stir it a bit. Okay. Now, if you do like the taste of a little bit of wine, you can add just half a glass of red wine, or if you like it a bit sweeter, you use white. Um, that's personal preference. I prefer my wine in a glass. We also, because we're putting the rice in, should be adding a little bit of salt. Otherwise, it could be a bit bland, although some people prefer their cooking a little bit more bland and then they put salt and pepper on the table. Up to you, as they say in New Zealand. Right, this is coming along nicely. We're now adding the chicken. And I'm not sure whether I've mentioned that. I use either chicken leg or chicken thigh. I find that most of our cooking, we stick to those, what I would call the brown meats. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you let other people work the camera. Well, I bet it would have happened to me as well. But this is how strong fresh chili is. So, <laughs> I don't think we can put this under bloopers. It's just part of the recording. Right, where was I? Chicken, yeah. I stay away for these kind of stir-fry meals from chicken breast, which is very nice lean white meat, but it tends to go dry very quickly in meals like that. So I'd like to be 
spoiled for more juicy meat and so I stick to the chicken thigh. Okay, now we're gonna let this cook. We'll turn it down a bit and just let it quietly simmer away for another oh, 10 minutes, which gives me an opportunity to enjoy my wine. And I'll come back and show you how the rest is done. Add the rice. And of course we get our trusted rice cooker here. And depending on how many guests you have, this is basically how you judge then on how much rice you're going to be putting in. You don't actually need all that much. You just really just want to add a little bit of carbs to the whole equation. So this is basically five five spoonfuls. Now <clears throat> and we stir this in and I wouldn't really crank up the heat too much on this. Now the traditional paella actually is done a little bit different whereby the rice is added a lot earlier than I did and it's cooked quite sharply. And the result of that is that on the bottom of this huge pan you got something like it's almost burned, it's like toasted rice at the bottom. And according to the locals, this is the best part of the whole paella. I guess it sort of soaks up the juices and it's nice and crispy. But every time that I try to do it, all I managed to do was burn the rice. So I stopped trying this and leave it to the experts in Valencia to do that. And basically I'll just carefully stir the rice in just put it under, just like that, and then just keep it on a very low simmer for another 10 minutes for the rice to soak up the heat, meaning of course the heat of the pan but also the heat of the spiciness because you can well imagine uh, we had two chilies in there and lots of pepper, this is quite a spicy dish. So that is what the rice does, but yeah, I wouldn't crank it up because it just burns and unless you know what you're doing, you probably need an awful amount of oil to start with. So this basically just cooks slightly around for another 10 minutes and then it's time to add the seafood because you probably wondered why is this still being put away. Well, the reason for that is if you cook that too long, it turns rubbery and ick and that's not very nice. So that's the last thing we add and then we're all done. Um, if you're wondering where the saffron goes, this would have been the moment where you add the saffron. Okay? And I haven't added it because the stuff is just too damn expensive. <laughs> Alright? So I'll see you in a moment when we add the seafood. We have basically let this simmer for another 10 minutes and it's almost finished but now comes the crowning moment. This is where we add the seafood and as I mentioned before, you don't want to put the seafood in and cook the hell out of it because otherwise it will go all rubbery. So we just put it in and we just carefully ladle it under here as you see and the mussels which we have cooked before separately uh, they just need to put in as well so they just get a little bit of the spiciness and the heat. Okay so we're adding them now and this is going to be a fantastic dish. Now, the other thing, you know, guys always like to do things in a convenient way. And what I particularly like about this is, you don't have 20 different dishes that you're going to be piling up on the table. Because, as this is a traditional Spanish meal, and the name means pan, this is going to be put on the table in the pan. Now, this is something you want to do for your next dinner party then. Surprise your guests, you just plonk the pan on the table, give everyone a spoon, and here we go. Well, not quite. We can still put it all on the plates. But this is the way the traditional paella is being served. You just put it on the table in the pan. Okay, so now we have mixed this under. We'll give it a tiny bit of heat, not too much, just to get the seafood cooked and then it will be ready to serve. Fantastic! Just another two minutes. Now I've given it another stir, it's another two or three minutes, just heating it up a little bit 
and there you go. There is the paella. That didn't take too long. It's not as fast as the usual Thai meals that you are used to, but I looked at the clock and it actually didn't take a lot longer than 35 minutes. So once you've done your preparation, the actual cooking of it is fast as well. So there you go, a Spanish dish cooked in New Zealand by a German for Thai and New Zealand visitors. How more ethnic can you get? Enjoy.